Arrowhead, the Tomahawk Chop. This game was supposed to have started at a little past noon Central Time, so some seven and a half hours later, we are ready for the final game of this divisional weekend. This is a tradition. Derek Johnson, great linebacker who ruptured his Achilles in a game about a month ago, so he's on IR, but he gets to pound the drum before one of the loudest crowds in the league. We all know by now, if you follow the NFL, you've got Arrowhead and you have Seattle, and they would rank one, two. You pick the order. Cairo Santos will be kicking off for Kansas City. So Pittsburgh will get the ball to start. And dropping back deep is Justin Gilbert. Sammy Coates is also back there. They're both inside the five yard line. And so at the moment it is dry. It could rain before this one is over. And away we go to determine who meets the Patriots next Sunday for the AFC Championship. From the two yard line, this is Gilbert. Good run back to begin things out to the 31 yard line as we take a look at the Steeler offense. Ben Roethlisberger, Miami Red Hawks. Le'Veon Bell, Michigan State. Roosevelt Knicks, Kent State University. Antonio Brown, Central Michigan. Eli Rogers, Louisville. Jesse James, Penn State. Alejandro Villanueva, United States Military Academy. Ramon Foster, Tennessee. Marquise Pouncey, Lakeland Senior High. David DiCastro. Stanford, Marcus Gilbert, Florida. That line has been tremendous. The Steelers giving up the second fewest sacks in the league this year. Only Oakland allowed fewer. So Roethlisberger starts out of the shotgun from the 30 yard line. And he dumps it off and almost has it picked off. He was trying to get it to Bell and Don Terry Poe, the guy who threw a touchdown pass here on Christmas night against Denver, the defensive lineman is able to knock it down. That would have been some way to start this game, huh? Nicely done by Poe. He just sees the ball and almost comes up with it. We know he can catch the ball. We've seen him score a touchdown earlier on a little flip pass. He can catch it, he can throw it, and almost had the pick. So second down and 10 from the 30. And the crowd already wreaking havoc with Roethlisberger trying to call the signals. There's Ramon Foster looking back and passing it on to Villanueva as Roethlisberger fires and that's caught for a six yard gain. Antonio Brown who had 106 receptions this season. Second only to Larry Fitzgerald of the Cardinals. Third down. Ben Roethlisberger has had a lot of success against the Kansas City Chiefs. Six starts, five and one and his rating is highest against any team that he has started against at least three times. Third and three. Of course, those numbers include that 5 TD performance in week four back in Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger fires, and that's caught, and forward progress will net the first down. Eli Rogers makes the catch. Eric Berry in on the stop, first down. One of the things you have to worry about is this guy right here coming back after the injury. Justin Houston and Le'Veon Bell, as good a receiver as he is, what's the highest priority? Make sure Ben is still standing so he can throw the football. Steelers going without a huddle. Again, Foster looking back. The fake handoff, and then it's caught by the tight end, and that's Jesse James taking it to the 45 yard line he's gotten better and better as the year has progressed Parker makes the tackle another Pittsburgh first down Ben Roethlisberger going to catch this ball and get it out of his hand that is a big departure from the days of let Ben be Ben right when he would sit back and hold the ball and bodies all around him and he didn't care and now they're catching it and throwing it and you're going to see the same thing out of the Kansas City Chiefs tonight too major departure you saw Mike Tomlin 10th year Never had a losing season. Trying to get into the championship game here. Roethlisberger, that shoulder shake, once again fires wide open, making the catch at the 30-yard line. Again, it's Jesse James. Heath Miller retired, and Ladarius Green had been brought in from San Diego, but he has been on the shelf much of the year with injuries. 16-yard gain. Let's talk about this offensive line for a moment. This group has really gelled into one of the top pass-blocking offensive lines in all the National Football League. 
If they don't get more pressure than this on Ben Roethlisberger, this thing will be over quickly. Steelers opening drive began at their own 30. So they moved 40 yards in five plays. Now the handoff goes to Le'Veon Bell. Gain of six. Let's take a look at the Chiefs defense. Raheem, New Year's Rochef, Southern Miss. Dantari Poe, Memphis. Chris Jones, Mississippi State. Justin Houston, Georgia. Terrence Smith, Florida State University. Ramake Wilson, Georgia. D. Ford, Auburn University. Martin Spears, West Oakland, California. Eric Berry, Tennessee. Ron Parker, Buford High School. Steve Nelson, Oregon State University. They're very happy, of course, to have Houston back. He even heard a good part of the season, second and four. Bell, with that patience that's become so prominent, so many stories told about him and how different he is to the 14-yard line first down. Now, here's what's going on here. Ron Parker, their typical back in the middle of the field safety, they're so worried about Le'Veon Bell in coverage, they're bringing him down as a linebacker, but now you've got to deal with Marquise Pouncey blocking on Ron Parker, and that's not a good matchup. First down at the 13-yard line. Bell again. Threads his way to the four-yard line. You look at this Chiefs defense, they were 24th in the league. Not very good in terms of yardage allowed. But when it comes to points allowed, they were seventh, which is terrific. Boy, that was a powerful pair of double-team blocks up front by this offensive line. They're dominating. Second and two. One reason the Chiefs had such a disparity is they had a ton of takeaways, including eight in the red zone. They could use one here. Second down and two. Play clock down to five. Big toss to the outside. Ben on the move. Throws corner of the end zone and incomplete. Secondary does its work. Pass intended for Levy on Bell. Third and a deuce. Well, there's no question that the star on the defense for the Chiefs, Marcus Peters, there turned over the coverage to the inside. But it was Justin Houston, the pass rusher, that ended up with the coverage on the outside that made the difference. Steelers now go five wide. Three-man rush. It's caught, and that's Eli Rogers, and he is stopped short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and about a yard. Ron Parker makes the tackle, and they started to send in the field goal group, and now they bring them back. Nicely done out here on the top by Ron Parker. No pick whatsoever out of the slot. If they could have gotten just the slightest rub, probably would have scored, and now the Chiefs take a timeout. It looked like a fire drill that the Chiefs called a timeout. They were running guys off and on. The Steelers started by sending their field goal unit out. Then they brought them back in. The offense stayed out there, and the Chiefs said, hold on a second. Let's just take a timeout before the fourth and one. Think he goes for it or just tries to draw him offside? I think he goes for it. I mean, we know what Mike Tomlin is. He's a guy that loves going for the two-point conversions, and that's two yards. This is nothing. This is just a little. But this is a sort of aggressive mindset. There's Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, that represents what Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers are all about. This is playoff time. You are not conservative in this situation. You're playing to win. They've had a great drive. And here comes the field goal team. If, after all that, if nothing else, at least they got Kansas City to use a timeout. <laughs> so, so much for all the aggression we thought we would see early on. Instead of 22 yard field goal attempt, Chris Boswell had a good season with this little chip shot here. Jordan Berry to put it down. And Pittsburgh starts by running 11 plays in five and a half minutes to take the early lead at Arrowhead. This divisional playoff game brought to you by Southwest. Guess the low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency by the Lincoln Motor Company. 
by Rocket Mortgage, by Quicken Loans, push button, get mortgage. And by GE, we imagine a better world and then make it real. As you look at scenes from the LA Coliseum 50 years ago today, Super Bowl one. There's Lombardi, the Packers beat the Chiefs 35 to 10. I was there, Chris, in my bassinet. And there was Len Dawson, who was the quarterback for Kansas City. Radio analyst now, the great Lenny for the Kansas City Chiefs. I worked with Lenny for about 10, 15 years on Inside the NFL. Simply put, not only one of the great players, the great guys ever. Classy man. It's a bouncing ball kickoff that's fielded at the 20-yard line. And this is Harris, a tight end, taking it out to the 45-yard line. So they didn't want to kick it to Tyreek Hill, and uh, it turns out to be pretty good for Kansas City. Anyway, as we take a look at the Kansas City offense. Alex Smith, University of Utah. Spencer Ware, LSU. Jeremy Macklin, Mizzou. Chris Conley, Georgia. Ty Hill, Pearson, Georgia. Travis Kelsey, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Eric Fisher, Central Michigan. Zach Fulton, Tennessee. Mitch Morse, Missouri. Laurence Vernet Tardif, McGill University. Mitchell Schwartz, Cal. Chief starting near midfield. Spencer Ware is the running back of the hand to on the inside give, and he takes the ball for a gain of eight to the 47 yard line. As we look at the quarterback, Alex Smith, several years in San Francisco. Then here with Andy Reid four years ago, only one pick in 186 postseason passes, five games. That was by Brian Cushing in last year's game at Houston when Kansas City routed them. Tyreek Hill is now in the backfield. And they'll give it to him on a sweep. And Hill looking for room and threads his way for a first down. And then gets gang tackled at the 41 yard line and forget about being an x-factor an x-factor is somebody you don't expect everybody knows about this guy now yeah tyree kill and one of the things that you have to do if you're going to beat the pittsburgh steelers is try to get outside of them forever this defense has been predicated upon the idea that those outside linebackers are going to set that hard edge they're going to keep everything in between but when you've got a speedster out there like tyree kill who only plays about 35 snaps a game that becomes a much bigger challenge. From the 41-yard line, he's already made his presence felt by the fact that Pittsburgh didn't want to kick the ball deep. Now Smith, ends in the pocket, throws, and that's Travis Kelsey. Tremendous season. Tight end, he'll be going to the Pro Bowl. Stopped by Sean Davis. They take it down to the 20 and a first down. Well, one of the things that you're going to get with Travis Kelsey is a guy who plays tight end but plays it like a wide receiver. You just saw the inside linebacker, Ryan Chazier, trying to read the eyes of Alex Smith. Alex Smith is a veteran quarterback. He is going to look at that zone defense, look where he's not throwing it, and then come back to the receiver beautifully done there. Kelsey, their top receiver this season, caught 85. Halfway through the opening quarter. Kansas City's initial drive over the middle. That's caught by Tyreek Hill to the 12-yard line. He goes. You look at Hill's numbers. They're off the charts here. He averaged 11.1 yards per carry. 24 carries this season. And he caught 61 passes, second most on the team. And of course, he really didn't uh, start playing very often until maybe mid-October. I think you have to go back to the days when Randy Moss first came on the scene. A guy that looks as fast on a National Football League field as that guy does. Second down and three. Smith comes to the near side, and that's caught for a first down. And a first and goal it will be is Jeremy Macklin, former Eagle, came over with Reed when Andy took over four years ago. Tackled there by Artie Burns, first and goal. I get the feeling that Jeremy Macklin might end up being a pretty big factor in this game. He had a groin injury in weeks 10 through 13 and set out, but every week since you've seen him with a little bit bigger role. So much of this offense is Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill. If they can add a third element, a third wide receiver to that mix tonight, it is going to be huge for Andy Reid. Hill in the backfield. Pittsburgh the only team that did not allow the first drive touchdown this season. And then in the playoffs, they do as Albert Wilson makes the catch for the touchdown. 
Boy, was that a good looking drive. They took over at the 45. They run two runs and four passes to take the early lead. You have Tyreek Hill as the decoy here. Fake away, the entire defense goes that way, and then at the eye position, the tailback position, you have a wide receiver in Albert Wilson who simply just outmaneuvers the young defensive back, Artie Burns. Cairo Santos for the extra point. Dustin Cole quick to put it down. And we are off and running in Kansas City. Each team scoring on its opening possessions, 7-3 Chiefs. You don't have to miss a moment of tonight's game with the NBC Sports app. You can watch the game anywhere, live on your laptop, tablet, and connected TVs. Kansas City. They're expecting a big ice storm, but most of the storminess was south of here. Right now, it's uh, exactly at the freezing mark, 32 degrees. Cairo Santos to kick off. This is Gilbert. And he'll down it there, and Pittsburgh will begin its drive from the 25-yard line with 6.09 remaining in the opening quarter. Tyreek Hill makes a difference even when he doesn't touch the ball. Watch when he goes this way with the fake. It's going to open up wide receiver Albert Wilson for a one-on-one -on -one right out here against Artie Burns and no match. So far in this game, Tyreek Hill, they're not kicking to him, and that fake got the Steelers. You know, here is Bell. He gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Le'Veon Bell missed the first three games this season, suspended, violating the substance abuse policy. Then they kept him out of the last game of the season because it meant nothing. Todd Haley coming back as the offensive coordinator has done a great job with this offense over the last five years. Was the head coach here 09 through 11. Got fired toward the end of the 11 season after 13 games. Got him to the playoffs. In fact, the last time a playoff game was played here, Haley was the coach and they lost to Baltimore. Second and 10. Roethlisberger, a ton of protection and fires and incomplete with Brown, the closest guy there, then grimacing third down and 10. Defensive coordinator is Bob Sutton. Talked about the fact 24th overall in terms of yardage allowed, but boy, when they had to ratchet it up and they did it in that first drive, they created a fourth down in the red zone, forced a field goal instead of a touchdown. That's why they were seventh best in points allowed. Now the advantage goes to these pass rushers. The crowd gets cranked up. And the offensive lineman can't hear her as well. We'll see if they can get a quick jump off the ball. Third and ten, and here they come, and Ben almost gets sacked. Fires deep downfield and getting open and making the catch over his shoulder is Antonio Brown. Live by the sword and die by the sword. They blitzed. They almost got Ben. He hangs in there and then fires downfield to as good a receiver as you'll see. You will not believe what you're about to see out here. Justin Houston is one-on-one. -on -one. An outside linebacker one-on-one -on -one against arguably the best receiver in the game. Give him a little credit. At least he gets him on the ground. The blitz didn't work. They paid a heavy price. From the 23-yard line, that's a gain of 52. And then it's behind Jesse James. The pass intended for the tight end. It'll be second down. Here's the blitz. They're going to bring everybody after Ben Roethlisberger. Everybody comes off of this side. It looks like it's going to happen. Tom Bali could not grab the foot of Ben Roethlisberger. And if you don't get him on the blitz, Ben's going to get you. Brown this time matched up with the safety. Terrence Mitchell. Second down and 10. To the outside goes the pass, caught at the 20-yard line. Eli Rogers, second year out of Louisville. He's, he's been coming on. Just what the Steelers needed, another good receiver, huh? It's pretty amazing how they just continue to develop these young receivers, but Eli Rogers has been tremendous. Kobe Hamilton we've seen make some plays. Demarcus Ayers 
They just keep developing them, and they all make plays. You know, Martavis Bryant was suspended all year. Wheaton got hurt. Third and seven from the 20. Lineman all looking back to Ben. Play clock at five. Now at one. And they just do get it off. And then the pass to the outside is too high. Intended for Antonio Brown. Fourth and seven. Boy, that's two badly missed throws between Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown on this drive. You don't see that in, in a month. Really, Antonio Brown was wide open, and that was going to be a first down. Two bad ones and one terrific one for 52 yards to set up a 38-yard attempt here for Chris Boswell. And Boswell is two for two with 3.51 remaining in the opening quarter. Chiefs by one. Harris Field is outside linebackers coach Joey Porter. He was arrested last Sunday night outside of Pittsburgh bar. Steelers put him on indefinite leave following the incident. Then he was reinstated by the team on Friday, obviously here tonight. And so Michelle will have more on that right after the kickoff here. You've got Tyree Kill standing in the end zone. They kicked away from him the last time. And the Chiefs were able to start a drive at the 45-yard line and go all the way in for a touchdown. This time, Hill's going to have a chance. Crowd buzzing from the one-yard line. And oh. Great coverage there. That is Vince Williams, number 98. Says, not on my watch. Vince Williams was rocketing down the field. A linebacker that no way is he the fastest guy on this kickoff cover team and yet he was the first one down the field you talk about passion from a veteran player the Steelers are putting a lot of their first line players on special teams tonight because of Tyreek Hill because of Hill and because they've had a lot of problems on special teams especially the coverage of Lee she's shift around Hill goes in motion the speedy one Smith rolling Directing traffic downfield, pass incomplete, and we go to Michelle. Well, Al, Joey Porter's arrest led to multiple charges, including aggravated assault. On Friday, the Allegheny County District Attorney's Office announced it had reviewed surveillance video of the incident and intended to drop all but two of the charges, misdemeanor disorderly conduct and public drunkenness. And Porter was reinstated, as you said. Any further discipline by the team or the league will depend upon the outcome of the ongoing legal, pro legal proceedings, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. And Joey Porter, the linebacker, outside linebacker coach, played with the Steelers for a number of years, made his mark on the field. In the 12-yard line, his little shovel pass, and that is Kelsey. Out to the 25-yard line, he goes. Boy, they got a lot of great little razzle-dazzle plays, and they've had them all year long. Well, here's what they're doing. They're going to leave this guy unblocked, bring Kelsey around, and Tyree Kill ripping across there is going to leave a huge hole for this little shovel pass inside. Interesting that you're taking James Harrison, and basically the best way to play him may be leave him unblocked and use the razzle-dazzle to get around him. Andy Reid, you got to love his playbook. You have for years. That's his pedigree in offense. First and ten here on the through the play in the quarter from the 25-yard line. To the outside. Spencer Ware. And Spencer Ware, a very interesting story in so many ways. I mean, Jamal Charles was the guy, but he's been hurt for the better part of the last two years. So Ware this year led the team in rushing with 921 yards. And in receiving, he averaged 13.5 yards per reception. He led the team in average per catch. And that's something you almost never see out of a running back. Former quarterback in high school, a great baseball player. Talked to Alex Smith. He says he understands what I'm seeing on my end. Second down and six. Here's the inside. Give again. This time it goes to Charkandrick West. And we have a flag. First one of the game, so we can tell you Carl Cheffers is the referee. Holding. Introduce Carl. Number 61 offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. 
Always good when you can introduce the referee like 13 minutes into a game, isn't it? It is wonderful. <laughs> it is tremendous. For Andy Reid, that makes this decision a little bit tougher here, though. But so far, I tell you, the thing that's been impressive so far in this game for me is the play of Alex Smith. He is known for being a quick-release quarterback, right? We talk about it all the time. He gets the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible. Well, Mike Tomlin on the Steelers' side, according to Andy Reid, says that he knows Tomlin reads the quarterback's eyes. So, so far in this game, we've seen Alex Smith look away and then throw back to a second target trying to take advantage of that technique. It's another part of a great chess game. Play clock is at 2 on second and 16. Smith is flushed out. And gets it away before he is out of bounds. Just barely. Flag on the play. Harrison, James Harrison came in and hit Alex Smith at the end. Got an ineligible man downfield is the initial call as Sheffers looks at Tomlin. Ineligible offensive player downfield, number 76. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, third down. Laurent Duvarnay, Tardif, right guard. There you go. One of the things that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to do is come out and jam superstar tight end Travis Kelsey. And you saw on that one, Alex Smith looked there first. Harrison was hitting Kelsey, and there goes Tyree Kill right down the middle of the field. Nobody saw him at all. So if he had gone Kelsey back to Hill, would have had six points on the board. Third and 16. Now Hill on a screen, and he'll get upended well shy of the first down by Artie Burns. And we will have our first punt of the game. Well, you're going to see some odd formation. Here's the, the big trips here on the outside. And the simple reason, they just want to get the ball in the hands of Tyree Kill, one of the fastest players in the NFL, and give him a chance to do all that kick returning he does so well. Speaking of kick returning. Mm. Antonio Brown is back for Pittsburgh. Dustin Colquitt, whose father won a couple of Super Bowl rings punting for the Steelers back in the 70s. Fair catch is called for and hauled in by Brown at the 28-yard line. 48 seconds left in the quarter, 7-6, to six, Kansas City. Well, she has the power to change the world and rewrite history, and this week she meets the great Harry Houdini. Timeless is the name of the show, returning tomorrow, 10 Eastern to Pacific, 9 Central, and Mountain on NBC. Kansas City. On this Sunday night, 48 seconds, the ball at the 29. Boy, I tell you what, how's this for the start of an encore to that other game, huh? Oh, that game We're was saying Dallas. We're saying, how, how can you top that? Off to a good start tonight as Roethlisberger is going to take it himself to the 33. Now, Ben last week was in a walking boot at the end of the game. Remember, he got injured at the end of the game against Miami hurt his ankle. He told us last night he thought originally it was his shoulder, but they uh, had an MRI. It was an old foot fracture. He came off the injury report, and he's fine. Good yeah, to go. He was in a boot until he got the MRI, and they told him he was fine. Took the day off of practice. He said, I never practice on that day this time of season. Right. So much hoopla about nothing, apparently. As usual. Second down at six from the 33. Le'Veon Bell picking and threading his way for what might be a first down as we kick down to the end of the quarter. Line judge comes in. Looks like he's going to spot it a little shy, which would mean it will be third down and one when we begin the second quarter. End of one, 7-6 Kansas City and this divisional playoff game from Arrowhead continues after these messages. Tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Looking down upon Union Station in Kansas City, the old train depot. Some people would like to ride us out of town on a rail, and that would be the destination, or at least the origination point. Third and one as we start the second quarter. From the 38-yard line, the handoff here goes to Bell for a first down. You know, you look at the history of these two teams. Pittsburgh has won six Super Bowls, been to eight. 
Kansas City has been to two, one one, but they haven't been to one in 47 years. They've kind of been a stepchild through the years. You know, they really have, and you've got to feel like that Alex Smith and company and Andy Reid hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. He's been to all those playoff games. What this would mean to come in against a franchise like the Pittsburgh Steelers and win this one in Arrowhead. Winner of this game to Foxborough next week to meet the Patriots. Here goes Bell, good and hard running out to almost midfield to the 49-yard line. Parker takes him down there. It'll be second down and one after a gain of nine. I just really thought that we were getting out of whack, not running the ball enough, but this is an unusual play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, pulling Alejandro Villanueva from the left side. Typically, their pulling is from DeCastro and Marcus Gilbert on the right. So a little bit of a new look. Eighth carry, Bell. And he's making that famous now, that, that hesitation, instead of just bursting through the hole. Running it up in there hard, he waits, he waits, and then he goes. Yeah, the double-double team. That's what I end up calling this thing. You get double teams and double teams, and then he just waits, and these poor linebackers stack behind those double teams. Sometimes they can't even see Le'Veon Bell. That patience has become his trademark and something I'm going to guess a lot of high school and even younger kids start trying to do. Eight carries, 47 yards. Bell again. And another seven yards. You know, he, like, he likened himself to, to Steph Curry of the Warriors. He said, hey, I'm not comparing myself to Steph Curry in terms of what he is in basketball. But he said, I could kind of change the way things are done. Much as, you know, Curry has every guy, you know, shooting 40-foot three-pointers. Yeah, and Mike Tomlin ended a meeting this week saying, okay, Steph Curry, you better lead us to the NBA championship. <laughs> Second and three, already 54 yards on the ground for Bell. And now Ben throws, and that is caught, and that is Brown to the 29-yard line for a Steeler first down. But now you're starting to see the Steelers as they've been in the second half of the season. You go play action fake, now you get the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Antonio Brown against Marcus Peters. The quick throw, this has been much more of the Steelers' look in the second half of the season. Now they flank Bell out, stack him on the right side. You got Bell and Brown over there. Empty the backfield. First down from the 31. This time only a two-man rush and nine back, and they dump it off to Jesse James, who takes it to the 23-yard line. Well, the Killer Bees, modern version. Ben, this year, 31 completions of more than 20 yards downfield, second most, 13 D passes, most in that category. Bell, 157 scrimmage yards, third highest in history. And Brown 481 since 2013, most in NFL history over a four-season span. And they have put up some phenomenal numbers. Second and four. And Roethlisberger hangs in the pocket and throws. And this time, Kobe Hamilton has to come back to make the catch. Short of the first down by a yard, third and one. You better be careful with those late throws to the outside against these Kansas City Chiefs. That one had a little bit of a chance defensively for, I believe that was Marcus Peters out there. Ben gets him to the line in a hurry. Didn't want Kansas City substituting defensively. And there's Bell again. Just enough hesitation to find that crease and pick up a first down at the 17-yard line. You know, that's really the game plan I thought we would see out of the Steelers tonight. This has been pretty much a decimated front for the Kansas City Chiefs this year. Derek Johnson, their all-world inside linebacker, Jay Howard, Alan Bailey, the starters. They have now been on third and fourth string guys at linebacker and defensive end for much of this season, and yet they still keep people out of the end zone. Been trying to wear him down a little bit on this drive. Pittsburgh's run 26 plays, and the Chiefs have run 11. And Roethlisberger fires to the end zone, and it's Antonio Brown, and they can't, he can't make the catch. Marcus Peters helping to bust it up, and it'll be second down. Pro Bowler Marcus Peters going against all-world Antonio Brown, and watch 
on the back end here as Marcus Peters gets his hand in at the last possible moment. This was a catch. Antonio Brown had the ball, and Peters just wrestled it out of there, got his arm in there, and pulled it out. Great play by Peters, who has 14 interceptions over his two-year career. Eight last year, six this season. Now Bell again. And this time, forget about hesitating. He started to slip as well. Eric Berry comes up from the safety spot to knock him down. It'll be third down and 11. Oh, baby, here we go. Eric Berry's going to come right out of center field, not even on your screen here at the beginning of this play. Flies up there. We've seen what he's done in coverage this year. Remarkable plays. But they knew Eric Berry would have to make some plays like that at the line of scrimmage against Le'Veon Bell. This is the 13th play of a drive. Their opening drive had 11 plays. Third and 11. Roethlisberger stepping up, fires, and that's incomplete. Bell says, where's the flag? He thought he was held by Ramik. Wilson said it's a fourth and 11 and in comes another field goal attempt here to try to make it 9-7. Ordinarily that's the kind of matchup you're looking for right there. Le'Veon Bell as good a receiver as there is in the game right now but Rameek Wilson who filled in behind Derek Johnson and behind Justin March Lillard at that linebacker position nicely done. 36 yard attempt Boswell trying to go three for three. which he does. It's the Kansas City pattern give up a lot of yards, but not a lot of points. It helps the three field goals. Still, it's 9-7 Pittsburgh. This divisional playoff brought to you by Verizon. Join a better network because better matters. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Chevrolet, the most awarded car company two years in a row. And by TD Ameritrade. Six Super Bowl titles, four in the 70s, and then one in 2005, one in 2008. Tremendous game in Tampa. Ran into Bill Cower, who coached the 2005 team. He's at the stadium tonight. Bill looks younger than he did in 2005. Maybe that's what coaching does to you. You look great. That's the reason he keeps saying no. <laughs> right. I think John Gruden's right behind him now. You're right. Kickoff down in the end zone by Tyree Hill. Line 18 to the half. 9-7 Steelers. Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, was in Atlanta yesterday, here tonight. Just paying a visit to, we were talking about Bill Cowers here. Clark Hunt was uh, with him a moment ago. The man who's father founded the American Football League, the Hunt, back in 1960. This team started, of course, in Dallas for three years as the Texans and came here in 63. This drop starts from the 25-yard line. They stack three receivers to the right side and hand the ball off to Spencer Ware, trying to get something going on the ground as we go to Michelle. Well, Al, Arthur Motes devotes his time and resources to the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Pittsburgh with regular visits and fundraising, and he was recently named to the organization's board of directors. Just one of the many reasons Motes is the Steelers nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year, presented by Nationwide, which will be awarded Super Bowl weekend at the annual NFL Honors Ceremony. Look forward to that. Thank you, Michelle. As you look at Motes, third season with the team, Three and a half sacks in 2016. Second down and seven from the 28-yard line, and that pass is caught at Hill. Does he pick up the first down? There's a toe dance there, and they will spot it just about at that line to gain. Carl Sheffers is going to go over to take a closer look. Those are the official sticks on the far side of the field, and it is a first down. Well, Tyreek Hill becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger part of this offense. I saw it a little bit in their game last week that Tyreek Hill is as good without the ball as he is with the ball. You have to do so many things to make sure that guy does not get outside on your defense that paying all that attention opens up other opportunities. Extra offensive lineman John Reed comes into the game here. 
And they run the play fake. Smith gets hit as he throws. And the ball up in the air is picked off at the 45-yard line. Ryan Shazier comes up with it. But Dupree came in. Smith got jarred as he released it. And Dupree forces the interception. Bud Dupree has simply been red hot of late. He is finally fulfilling exactly what they thought he could be as an outside linebacker. They bring in the extra offensive lineman, Ja Reed, and it was Bud Dupree who beats him cleanly around the edge, and there is the break that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been looking for. For Shazier, that is four interceptions in his last four games. The last two in the regular season had one last week. Has one tonight, and he saw Smith bringing out his arm, so he may have paid a price on that as well. Well, you bring in the extra offensive lineman, you think you're going to protect your quarterback, you get it out quickly, and you throw that kind of interception when your quarterback gets hit. Go figure. From the 44 now, Roethlisberger on a delay, hands it to Bell. Bell picks up nine more yards, so Bell already tonight on a dozen carries has picked up 65 yards. Well, you see some real mobility out of David DeCastro, the top end guard over here on the right-hand side. Anytime he can get out in front, that time gets a little shot on Poe, then gets down the field against the linebacker, and then it's the patience of Le'Veon Bell. DeCastro and Pouncey, the center, will be going to the Pro Bowl. As he first down is picked up by Le'Veon Bell. Actually, they hope they're not going to the Pro Bowl. They were named to it, but they'd rather play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Look at the patience here. You're going to talk about Le'Veon Bell come here and just sit. Watch him just sit behind this double team. Yeah, it's second and one. Every high school coach in the country before they saw Le'Veon Bell would have gone crazy. What are you doing? Tippy-toeing into the hole, and yet he's made it an art form. Might get to college in the NFL, too, uh, the way he's probably. going. Now from the 31. Roethlisberger, that pump fake, and fires, that's caught Jesse James to the five-yard line. So Jesse James has already caught four passes for 60 yards tonight, first and goal Pittsburgh. They're going to fake the quick screen out to Antonio Brown. Everybody comes flying up, and then Jesse James, instead of blocking, turns up the field and comes up with a big play. From the five, already 213 yards gained by the Steelers in a quarter and a half. And that's knocked in the air, and then is it picked off in the end zone? It is. So you've got Eric Berry coming up with a huge interception created by Frank Zombo. So exactly what happened to Kansas City happens to the Steelers. And the ball comes out to the 20-yard line. Play under After review. review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The intercepting team's player had his hands under the ball, and he never did bring the ball out of the end zone. It is a touchback. So that's Eric Berry. The ball touches the ground, but he has control of it all the way through. Control there. Then at the end, the ball touches the ground, but that is legal. So the interception for Eric Berry stands, and the Chiefs take over the 20. And if you're wondering about any sort of safety, anything like that, remember that Berry would have had to have gotten the entire football across the outside of that goal line and then brought it back to have any kind of issue whatsoever. He clearly did not. Thought about it and thought better of it. So at the 20 now, Alex Smith hands the ball off to Spencer Ware, and we're for a game of three, second down and seven. The other unusual part about that play, it probably was some sort of a hot, because otherwise Alejandro Villanueva would have gone right out there to Zombo and tried to chop him at the knee so he couldn't get up in the air to make that kind of a play. So I'm guessing it was one of those automatics on the part of Ben Roethlisberger trying to get it out to Antonio Brown. Nobody else may have even known about it, and neither did go in the Each team with an interception in the quarter here, and that's knocked away, and that's Bud Dupree. 
has really come on, intended for Tyreek Hill. But the Cleese second year is the number one draft choice out of Kentucky last year, and he has really, like the rest of this defense, picked it up week after week. Yeah, and the instincts that we're starting to see, he never even rushed the quarterback on that one. He went straight out to the screen. But remember, here's a guy that missed so much of training camp. He had groin surgery. He didn't come back until his first snap was week 11. And since then, he has been simply sensational. Third and seven. Kelsey moving over to the right slot. They clock at two. Smith chased away against the grain. Throws, and it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Spencer Ware, who couldn't haul it in along the sideline. Fourth down, and Colquitt comes into punt. Oh, Alex Smith is going to be six. They had the nose tackle, Javon Hargrave, on a zone blitz type thing out in coverage against Spencer Ware, his top receiving running back, and they missed it. Good play by Smith to get away, but they had a chance for a big one. So Brown back to return the punt. Colquitt with his second punt. His first was 43 yards. And he gets it away. Short kick. Brown from the 39. Trying to get around the corner. And brings it back to just about midfield with 5.03 remaining in the hand. 9-7 Pittsburgh. It's a phrase you've heard a million times, bend, don't break. And no better example than this team. 24th in yards allowed per game, but allowing only 19 points per game. So in the history of the league, it's the most yards allowed per game among the more than 1,000 teams to allow less than 20 points. Part of that, of course, the 33 takeaways, the most picks in the league, the most fumble recoveries in the league. First team to lead the league in both categories since Buddy Ryan's Eagles back in 89. And the first time these two teams met, they broke and they bent. They couldn't <laughs> stop them for anything. From the 45-yard line, Roosevelt Nix is the fullback. He's in the game. Here's Bell. And the first time these teams met, we were, it's the Sunday night, it's week four, we're in Pittsburgh. It's 22 to nothing at the end of the quarter. It's 29 nothing at the half. How's that for the ratings, huh? Yeah, really. We told a lot of stories that night. Yes, we did. But it really, I think, in some ways changed what they're doing on the defensive side with Bob Sutton and Andy Reid. They went a little more conservative on that side of the ball and just decided, hey, let's keep the ball in front of us, see what happens if we match up, don't let them in the end zone exactly as they've done here tonight. Second and eight. Low throw caught by Brown, and then he runs into the Chiefs bench. Went down to, to scoop it up. It'll be third down and five. It's a heck of a catch, wasn't it? Tremendous. He's down right off the Ooh. ground. I, I tell you, there aren't. This guy can do everything. Now he can dance too. We saw him on, you know, dancing with the stars. <laughs> See him dancing in the end zone. Just one of the great players in the league. One of the great smiles. A guy you love being around. Superstar. Some pretty amazing celebrations as well. Some of which have led the penalties. Others are pretty cool. Third down and four. Play clock at one. With a flag down, and they may have a delay of game here because, yep, it's going to be a delay of game. Fire to the snap. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Clock went to zero, and then take a look again. At, there it was, and it's the right call. And remember the mechanics of that for that back judge. He's looking at the clock. If he sees it go to zero and then drops his eyes and sees the ball not snap, it's a foul. Sometimes it goes to zero, and the time between when he's looking at the clock and looks down can actually work to the offense's favor. Yeah, good point, because you see that a lot. We'll see the clock at zero, and we'll say, well, why wasn't there a flag? But that time he looked up, saw a double zero. They give it to Bell on a third and nine, 
and Bell is going to pick up a first down and a few yards more before he gets knocked out of bounds. He followed Marquise Pouncey. How many centers do you see lead the way? But, of course, this is why this guy goes to the Pro Bowl almost every year. Yeah, at the University of Florida, obviously a great athlete as he leads the way out in front of Le'Veon Bell here. And now the Steelers are back into the mode that they do best when Le'Veon Bell is taking over with the running game then you see the rest of this thing come to life it's what they've done his carries went from 17 to about 27 after that Dallas loss on the 37 with Knicks the fullback in the game Bell well, it's just beautiful to watch Knicks helping to lead the way the fullback Second year at a Kent State gain of six, second and four. Okay, we've been having a little fun. What does Le'Veon style remind you of? Well, if you're old enough, you remember the old game Frogger, and that's kind of what it looks like. He just sort of slowly works his way to the next level, then to the next level, and dances around, and you go, come on, Le'Veon, run, and then by the end of the game, Frogger's got about 200 yards. That is classic. <laughs> I mean, Fred Gadelli coming up with some fantastic graphics and animation on second down and four and that's Le'Veon Bell and he is close to 100 yards tonight that is 100 on 17 carries two minute warning at Arrowhead 9-7 Pittsburgh coming up to the halftime Dan Tony and Rodney back in our studio on the first half in case you haven't heard Packers beat the Cowboys I think you've heard 34 31 unbelievable game Aaron Rodgers post game reaction all coming your way on the Toyota halftime first and ten with two minutes to go in the half two point lead for the Steelers ball to the 25 This time he gets corralled after a game of one. 18 carries, 101 yards for Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, and one of the things that appears to be happening here, Al, it looks like this Steelers offensive line is starting to take over a bit. I thought it might be very difficult for the inside linebackers and these defensive linemen of the Chiefs to hold up to this offensive line on Le'Veon Bell all night. We'll see how it goes along. That was a good first down stop, though. Gives him a chance here. Pittsburgh will run its 40th play. The Chiefs have run 17. Second and nine. Roethlisberger to Bell. So he hasn't been much in the passing game tonight. He's carried the ball, of course, a ton of times. Rameek Wilson makes the tackle. And timeout taken here on third down. Two weeks from today, hockey goes Hollywood. NHL All-Star Game at the home of the King Staples Center coming your way. The NHL All-Star Game Sunday, January 29th, right here on NBC. So 106 to play in the half. It's third down and 12. Gotta have a time for the Chiefs right here. Big Chris Jones is getting his crowd fired up during the break. Number 95, he needs a play. Not much so far tonight. Decimal level rising. Third and 12 from the 28-yard line. Four-man rush. Roethlisberger fires wobbly pass and incomplete. And again, looking for a flag is Eli Rogers. There is none. Yeah. And Boswell will have to come in and uh, kick a fourth field goal to get some Pittsburgh points as Rodgers and Roethlisberger both look up at the board and say, come on, that's There's, interference. No, Chris Jones, no, it's not. There's the tip pass, so everything that goes on after that is absolutely by the rules. So Chris Jones got the crowd fired up and then yep. got a little piece of the ball and big play. Just enough. This is a 45-yard field goal attempt. And Boswell has accounted for all of the scoring. Steelers five possessions, four field goals. Less than a minute to go, back in 30 seconds. 2017 Pro Bowl comes your way, presented by Aquafina, January the 29th. Back to the good old format AFC, NFC. Pro Bowl skills showdown Thursday, January 26th on ESPN. 
The Killer Bees, how are they doing tonight? Well, Roethlisberger, 141, the one pick. Bell already over 100 yards, and Brown with four catches for 72. But the Kansas City defense keeping them in the game because Pittsburgh, 246 yards. They're on a the pace for 500 yards tonight, but haven't been in to the end zone. Yeah, I, I've been really impressed. It's really how they made their living this season, ranked fifth in red zone, simply because of what they've done tonight. They, they don't allow touchdowns to be scored. So give a little credit to those guys. They're hanging in. Now they need a little help from the offensive side. So 55 seconds, KC has one timeout. They'll get the ball, and they will get the second half kickoff as well. As it go Hill's way. He does. He has a green light. And here he comes from six yards in. Out to the 15. So again, very good coverage by the Steelers on a couple of his run backs. Jordan Dangerfield made the tackle. Well, Alex Smith has done a nice job, at least on that opening drive. Watch him look off these linebackers. Get Ryan Shazier to move and then come back to Travis Kelsey. They've got to get back to some of that. That is the thing that has been working so well on that opening drive, and they've gotten away from it here. They've had a few penalties. They've had a few issues. Let's see if Alex Smith can put together another drive like that opener. TD, punt, pick, and a punt. Of course, the interception was... Arm was hit, the whole thing. From the 16. Simmons going to the line as if the blitz, now he backs off. Now he's going to come again. And it's caught on the outside, and this is Hill. And he gets bottled up at the 20-yard line, second down. Smith's got to hustle him up there. Only one timeout left for Kansas City. Yeah, and Alex Smith going to the hard count now, trying to get the Steelers to show that blitz. Ah! Hill in the slot to the left side. Smith going deep right, and that is not complete. Chris Connolly was out of bounds as he hauled it in. Ross Cockrell with a flag on the play was covering on the Personal play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 15, defense for contact in the quarterback's helmet. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. So they call that on Shazier with 20 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, give a little credit to Spencer Ware for stepping up and making the block, and then Shazier had to reach out and try and get him, just hit him right in the face. Easy call. So Shazier before the game, 32 degrees, he's out without a shirt. That's nothing. He was out without a shirt last week in Pittsburgh when it was 17. Florida kid. I had a body like that. I don't know if I own a shirt. <laughs> It'll be a tank top from the 35. So in blitz again, he got Harrison to come across the line. And it false was start. a false start, though, that offense. caused it. Five-yard penalty, first down. Zach Fulton. Yeah, he went about two or three hard counts that time until finally he got Zach Fulton, his own guy, to yep. jump off sides. It's really an effective tool when you're at home and the crowd is out of it on the offensive side because if the Steelers tip the blitz, now Alex Smith can change the protection and take a shot down the field. I think it's the Chiefs had 29 false start penalties this year, the highest total in the league. Despite playing half their games here, where they could never have that. First and 15. Incomplete. Dropped at the 43-yard line. Jeremy Macklin. Second down. They got him to show the hard count, and he knew that Ryan Shazier was going to go all the way across the field here. And Alex Smith tried to get it out. Just going to make the catch. So some good quarterback play going on for Andy Reid, but they have to execute the plays afterwards. Second and 15 for Kendrick West. Frank Smith in the backfield. Smith to West. Then he drops it. And 
and it's recovered by Pittsburgh at the 41 yard line but by the time Pittsburgh gets possession of the ball there's only three seconds remaining but that's enough of course for one number seven to throw the ball into the end zone. Kendrick West just trying to reposition the ball lost it and you assume I don't know if they're even going to try a field goal that long what to be about 58 yards and so far this year Boswell 0 for 250 plus. Kansas City only 17 turnovers during the regular season. They've already had two in the game tonight. Do you go with, I would take my chances of a Pittsburgh with Roethlisberger throwing a Hail Mary as opposed to Boswell making a 58 yard field goal. What yeah, about you? I, I would too. Boswell's long of his career is 51. It's cold out here. So you don't expect that ball to carry. Now it would not surprise me to see them try to go some kind of a hard count and see if they can get the Chiefs defensively to jump off sides and steal that five yards. The other thing too is you can have a run back uh, on the, with Tyreek Hill back there. So if it's short, you might have a run back. You want to get all kinds of action along the offensive front. And defense as well. First charge timeout, Pittsburgh. A 30 second timeout. And you, you didn't know whether to have the special teams on or your defense or whatever. Yeah, and I'm not so sure the sight of Tyreek Hill back there may not alter this strategy. I'm with you. I mean, think about what you have out there. You have about eight offensive linemen, a couple of tight ends, a kicker, and a holder. Do you really want Tyreek Hill going? And I think that Mike Tom or Andy Reid understood what was going on, and then Mike Tomlin responded appropriately. He did, and he sends. Roethlisberger right there's one of the best special teams coaches no ever Dave Tove who actually was interviewed by the Broncos and the Chargers within the past week for the head coaching position got neither but in Chicago and Kansas City he has done magnificent work over a decade and a half and Travis Kelsey the tight end now standing back in the end zone for the Chiefs Antonio Brown is going to get tackled at the 11-yard line as time expires. So the only touchdown of the half belongs to Kansas City, but the lead belongs to Pittsburgh. 12-7 Steelers at the break coming up next to you at halftime after these messages from your NBC station. Tonight's first half highlights are brought to you by Chevrolet. This is our Tonight, the Chiefs the battle of Pittsburgh Steelers in this AFC divisional playoff game. Oh, baby, here we go. Albert Wilson makes the catch for the touchdown. Boy, was that a good looking drive. Smith gets hit as he throws. Picked off Ryan Shazier. Chevrolet, the most awarded car company two years in a row. 12-7. Pittsburgh leading Kansas City, winner of the game, on to Foxborough next Sunday to face the Patriots for the AFC Championship. So, Ben Roethlisberger tonight, 170 yards through the year, that one interception off the deflection, 14 of 23 overall. Le'Veon Bell already 101 rushing yards, second most in the first half of a Pittsburgh postseason game. Franco Harris holds that mark. Antonio Brown tying a record held by Larry Fitzgerald, fourth consecutive playoff game with 100 or more receiving yards. He's already in the triple figures. And the KC defense, we're talking about all the yards they allow, how few points they allow. Case in point, again tonight, 275 allowed and 12 points allowed. No touchdowns, four field goals. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. They had a chip ice off the seats this morning, but right now, weather holding, 33 degrees. We've had no precipitation. And Kansas City will receive the second half kickoff. And Pittsburgh special teams coverage unit doing a very good job on the two kicks to Tyreek tonight. Boswell has accounted for all the scoring for the Steelers. 
sending it down toward Hill. Third quarter underway at Arrowhead. And Hill's going to run this one back from the six. Has some blocking out in front, but slips. And down he goes at the 24-yard line. They'll start from there. Well, Tyreek Hill, who's been so explosive this season for the Kansas City Chiefs, used a lot as a decoy in that first half. You fake him out there, get the ball to Kelsey inside, fake it to him, running wide, go bootleg back the other way for the touchdown. And then there he was, wide open, on the one play that the Kansas City Chiefs had a chance to break one, and Alex Smith didn't see it. That was the only guy I think I've ever seen Chris who runs a 4-2-4 four four when he's in motion. What? <laughs> From the 24-yard line. Smith almost gets sacked, has to get it away before he goes down, and it'll be second down. Pressure put on by Stefan Tuitt, defensive end. Now Stefan Tuitt right out here, who really has become the main man up front for the Pittsburgh Steelers since Cameron Hayward was injured at the pectoral issue. And there's Eric Fisher, who's been hanging in there pretty good so far against James Harrison. And James Harrison, the number one sacker, amazingly, at age 38 on this Pittsburgh Steelers team. And you're looking at Eric Fisher, who's the number one overall draft pick in the entire NFL back in 2012. And it's a good tackle here by James Harrison. Still rolling along. James Harrison, what a career he's had. Talking to a couple of folks last night. Is he a Hall of Famer? <laughs> Maybe, you know, I mean, he's won two Super Bowl championships. I mean, there is no more exciting or dramatic play in Super Bowl history than his 100-yard interception return. Of course, if you're a, a Giants fan, when David Tyree mm -hmm. put that catch there, Santonio Holmes made a catch in that same game against Arizona, but 100 yards at the end of the half. On an interception run back of Kurt Warner. Defensive player of the year, and the Hardy showed on that return, I think, pretty much told it all about his career. Third and 11, Smith fires into a lot of traffic, and it's incomplete, and the crowd wants a flag, but won't get one intended for Travis Kelsey, and they have done a good job on Kelsey tonight, holding him to two catches. Well, if Kelsey sort of stops and drives back hard into the ball, he probably gets this call he tried to, but Cockrell ends up getting there just a little bit early. In reality, that is interference. Mm -hmm. And that's why you hear all the booing, because they just replay that on the big screen. Dustin Colquitt, his third punt of the night. Pittsburgh has not had the punt. Tony Brown is back. Colquitt sends one to the next sky. Good kick, fielded at the 22. Brown, it's hogtied by Albert Wilson back at the 25-yard line after a 54-yard boot. Michelle Tafoya back in Kansas City, and after being held to four field goals in the first half, I asked Mike Tomlin, how can you get in the end zone? And he said, just keep doing what we're doing. Nothing new, no new plays, no new concepts. Keep doing what we're doing and do it better. I'm not going to make up something that isn't there. Now to Heather Cox. Michelle, Le'Veon Bell's patient running style has been the focus for the Chiefs defense all week. With Justin Houston telling me the worst thing we can do is wait. If we do, he'll make us miss. But so far, the Chiefs haven't been able to execute the game plan with Bell running for over 100 yards in the first half. All right, Heather, here is Bell, and he's got a lot more here. Look at him off to the races again before he gets dragged down. He's still going and dragged down to the 36-yard line. Ramik Wilson, the linebacker, runs him down finally, and that is a gain of 38 yards to the 36-yard line. This line is getting displaced. These double teams are moving guys back, so these linebackers just can't find a spot to come through there. And Le'Veon Bell is so slow to the hole, it's giving this bigger, better offensive line from Pittsburgh a chance to displace and move the defensive line of the Chiefs. Bell, 167 yards on the ground last week against Miami. I mean, it looks like the play is over, and he goes to the 30-yard line. Again, waiting and waiting and seeing what develops out in front of him. That time again is six. He now has 145 yards tonight. Watch him skip. I mean, this is what you do down the sidewalk. 
Let's wait. All right, stand up. All right, let's give uh, Pouncey a little cheese and then run through. I have never seen it. I've talked to 100 people this week and asked them about that running style. They all say the same thing. I I've never seen it, but it works. Skip to Mizuma. No, never mind. <laughs> Second down and four from the 30. Again, it's crazy to watch, isn't it? Very close to a first down. You know what's interesting, though, is that Mike Tomlin, his whole life, high school, peewee, football, whatever, his whole life, everybody told him that he was wrong, that he was wrong. That running style was wrong. Mike Tomlin went up to scout Kirk Cousins at Michigan State and met him for the first time and watched him on tape and said, I love your patience. It about knocked Le'Veon Bell over, the fact that here's an NFL coach that finally got what he was doing. 21 carries tonight. He's been a big part of their passing game during the season, but tonight only one reception. And Roethlisberger throws, and that's incomplete. Second and ten. Most rushing yards in a player's first two postseason games. Well, Arian Foster. Then of the Texans at 285 and Bell right now 316 and he still has almost a full half to go. And so much of this story is because of Le'Veon Bell, the Steelers keep converting on third downs and the Chiefs have yet to convert on third down. 0 for 3 in this game. 2 to 1 ratio in plays. Pittsburgh has run 46. The Chiefs have had 23. Second and 10. They give it to Bell again. A little bit of yardage here to the 24. Wilson in on the stop. Nicely done by Rameek Wilson this time. He's going to avoid the block of Marquise Pouncey. This is something they have not been able to do much of. Attack and went up and made the play. So here they are again for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As dominant as they've been, they have been getting stuck in this end of the field and kicking field goals and basically keeping the Chiefs in this game. Four field goals and a pick, sixth drive inside the KC 30. Third and nine. Ben dumps it off. And this time it is Bell unable to get out of the backfield. And that will set up a fifth field goal attempt for Boswell. It's really remarkable, isn't it? That Bob Sutton's defense can just do this time after time. They've done it all season long, and they've really done it tonight, Al, with very little help from the pass rushers. We have not seen Tamba Ali. We have not seen Chris Jones. We have not seen Justin Houston or D. Ford have much of an impact on this game at all. Barely called any of their names. 43-yard attempt. And for Chris Boswell, he has just tied an NFL postseason record. Five field goals. Done for the 11th time. 10.06 to go in the third. 15-7 Pittsburgh. The night show this week with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, the great Michael Strahan will be there. There is Michael Keaton. He is a huge Pittsburgh Steeler fan. I know he's sitting on pins and needles tonight. The Tonight Show with Jimmy all this week on NBC. Hill from the three yard line. And the coverage is very good to the 21 yard line. Pittsburgh Steelers, you go through the last 10 seasons or more North American pro sports baseball, the NBA, NHL, none. And then you go to Pittsburgh, the Steelers, Chuck Noll, 23 years, Bill Cowher, 15, Mike Tomlin, 10 years. So you've got three guys who have coached the Pittsburgh Steelers, six Super Bowls. There is Bill Cowher. Mentioned that he was here. He was also the defensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs back in 89 through 91, which led to his getting the head coaching job at Pittsburgh. The screen set up here to falling down is Spencer Ware. You know, you look at the Steelers, three coaches 
in almost a half century. Sometime in the near future, the San Francisco 49ers will hire their fourth head coach in four years. Not that you're bitter. Well, no, I mean, I'm just <laughs> pointing it out as a, as, a, as a fact. But, I mean, you talk about stability, solidness, and all of the rest. It's no, Pittsburgh. No question about it. And, of course, it helps to have three great coaches, right? I mean, all three of those guys have been tremendous. But it's a great tribute to the Rooney family. Their patience, and what do they tell Mike Tomlin all the time? Just be yourself. We hired you for a reason. Be yourself. Tyler at age 34. And Smith throws deep downfield, but incomplete. Chris Conley, and now you've got a flag at the 40-yard line. So will the, the fans finally get the oh, yeah. result they're looking for? Tomlin saying it's uncatchable. It was over his head. And then... Andy Reid will say it's uncatchable because Ross Cockrell pushed him. And Carl Sheffers will let us know momentarily. Pass interference, number 31 defense, automatic, first down. Clearly knocked him off the path of the ball. And that was exactly what the Chiefs needed. Mike Tomlin's never going to buy into that one. I'm not sure it would have been catchable, but he got knocked so far off the path, you'll never know. Oh, here we go. Mm. Tomlin with, uh, he's going to coach him up now. This, this young secondary and young players in general that Mike Tomlin has developed on this team have made a huge difference in this second half run. Sean Davis, who's trying to calm down, Cockrell right now, one of those young players. But we were back in Seattle for a minute. From the 38-yard line, first down is the three-yard run up the middle here for Spencer Ware. That'll make it second down and about seven or eight. Yeah, and one of the young guys we've been talking about is simply a superstar on the outside now is Bud Dupree. Remember, this is a guy that really has had very little training whatsoever, but he had that kind of explosiveness at the University of Kentucky, and yet you didn't see him finish plays there the way that I thought that he might be able to. He's always the best athlete on the field, and yet here under Tomlin's system, under Keith Butler, the defensive coordinator, you're starting to finally see it. Second down and seven for the 41. Smith pumps, and he's going to run. You know, you go back to 2012, Chris, to your point, the Steelers and the fence has always been their hallmark going back to the steel curtain years. They were old and slow. No doubt. They were the oldest. As you look at it there, the steel defense, average age of the starters. Now they're the 11th youngest building through the draft. They started three rookies last week. And speed. You know, youth and speed. Ryan Shazier, one of the fastest linebackers. There's Artie Burns. Very fast out of University of Miami. Sean Davis added speed on the back end. Bud Dupree. They now are a very explosive defense. Third down and three, and they, they, it is Ware who takes the snap, the direct snap, and picks up the first down. Lined up in the diamond formation. They snap it to Ware, and he picks up the first. <laughs> they just switch positions, basically. Spencer Ware now the quarterback, and Alex Smith the tailback. And here they go, running a little read option. I told you Spencer Ware back in Cincinnati at Princeton High School was a option quarterback and showed a little bit of those skills there. Halfway through the third quarter. 47-yard line. Three-man rush, in back pass is incomplete. One hop by Sean Davis will be second and ten. Yeah, just a misread there by Tyreek Hill. He's so fast, but it's those little nuances like that that keep him off the field. He just had a linebacker sitting inside of him. You just have to turn and sort of work away from him. He worked back inside. Alex Smith had no idea where he's going. Ben Roethlisberger trying to get to his fourth Super Bowl. Second and ten. Blazing in motion. Very close to a first down. Most guys just, you know, kind of trot or amble in motion. He sprints. Take a look at this, Al, from James Harrison's perspective right here. This is going to come so fast across here. You either have to take his head off or worry about Alex Smith, and it's a split-second decision. 
and then all of a sudden, then they'll bring Kelsey back around and do the little shovel pass. This is a great package right now. They don't block the outside linebacker and just play games with it. Yep. Harrison still looking for the number on the license plate. Third and two at the 39-yard line. Kelsey sets up on the right slot. And now you've got a whistle before the snap. Delay of game, uh, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cannot do that. They finally got themselves on a roll. They got the penalty, third and two. You're down in possibly four down territory if you wanted to run it twice. Just a huge mistake. Third and seven now, back at the 44. Where Travis Kelsey still with just two catches. He is typically the go-to guy. Now set off just to the right. In the slot, five receivers. Four-man rush, and that's enough. And there's James Harrison. Gets the sack back to the 49-yard line, fourth and long. I, I don't know how you beat father time but this guy has at age 38 he's been the best player on the Pittsburgh Steelers defense let's just tell exactly how it is he's their leading sacker he spends three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year taking care of his body some of the most bizarre acupuncture dry puncture cupping whatever it is that anybody can put in front of him he does it and he's playing great thousand bucks a day Colquitt's punt and this is going to pin the Steelers very deep. So a, a perfect kick. They'll spot it at the two. 5-12 to go in the third. Harrison gets the sack. Another one. 15-7 Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers begin this drive from their own two-yard line. A little over five minutes to go in the third. Winner gets a trip to Foxborough to meet the Patriots next Sunday and a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Nix is the fullback. Bell is the running back and Bell's going to get stuck at the line of scrimmage. Ramit Wilson, 53, having a nice night, makes the stop. Second and ten. Yeah, Ramit Wilson is the one guy who has consistently attacked Le'Veon Bell tonight. He just continues to attack the line of scrimmage and as Le'Veon dances, he's often there to make the play. Now Le'Veon Bell can't dance too much because you certainly don't want to give up two points. And at the kick from the 20. Eight point game, second down and 10 from the two. Extra offensive lineman in for the Steelers. And a fullback. And there's Bell. A little hurdle move. Gets him out of the shadow of the goalpost to the 11-yard line. It'll be third and one. There's his buddy, Roosevelt Nix, the big fullback. They think he's made a big difference for Le'Veon Bell. He missed six of the first eight weeks with a bad back. Here's a guy that was a defensive lineman and a good one in college. And now he says, oh, it's easy to handle 250-pound guys. I used to play against those 300-pounders all the time. Third and one from the 11. One more time, and this time they're going to stuff him at the line of scrimmage. Big stop. Forcing a punt from deep in their own territory. Zombo makes the tackle, and for the first time in the game, the Pittsburgh Steelers will have to punt. Big Chris Jones, who may be one of their best defensive players, Able to stand them up in here, nicely done. They finally get a little bit of pressure up the middle. That was Jarvis Jenkins as well, and that delayed style didn't work that time, and we have seen a lot of chippiness on the outside. Jordan Berry, his first punt of the night, and he kicks it away from Hill, and out of bounds. Not bad, not bad for an angled kick. And they'll march it out to, uh, well, not as good as they originally thought. Yeah. 47-yard line of Kansas City. Three minutes left in the third. Eight-point game. This divisional playoff game on NBC being brought to you by the 2017 Kia Sorento. Learn more at 
Nokia.com. Buy Samsung Pay. Turn your phone into your wallet. Buy Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And buy AT&T. First the Pittsburgh. Well, it's Green Bay, Atlanta. In the NFC, it's New England against the winner of this one in the AFC. 15-7 is the score. Chiefs start in good field position after a 35-yard punt from the Pittsburgh 46. Smith deep downfield, and Kelsey can't hold on. Kelsey, their number one receiver, has not caught a ball since the first quarter. Knows he should have had that one. Oh, this is killer because they've got the matchup they want. They have Lawrence Timmons, the middle linebacker. He can't stay with Kelsey, and Kelsey can't hang on. Give a little credit to Mike Mitchell for coming over with the hit, but that was just a drop. And that was what they've needed. They have basically taken away the two big threats as they did in the first matchup. Kelsey and Hill, no real factor so far. Second and 10, play clock at three. Good protection, but good secondary coverage. Of course, that amounts to Dupree. Dupree, yeah, he's, he's right there. He hit Moore last week, Matt Moore of Miami, and got fined for it. Go back to week four. Take a look at, at what they've done with these two guys in the two games. Yeah, it's sort of Belichickian, isn't it? They take away the star players on the other team and make somebody else beat them. So maybe now Andy Reid needs to say, okay, if they're going to play those guys tough, who else can step up and make a play for me? Chris Connolly's made a few in the past. Jeremy Macklin. I haven't seen the other guys making plays either. Really, they have very little offense to speak of so far tonight. Black, 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 yeah. No running game. 47 yards on the ground as opposed to 164 for Pittsburgh. And Smith is going to get wrapped up. At the, with the, they're going to blow it dead, though, before him. Because First time charge, out. timeout. Ooh, timeout was taken. No, timeout. Kansas City. And then now the officials are coming in saying, hold on a second, because Kelsey is exactly joined with right. somebody. When, when the play was over, Travis Kelsey decked one of the Pittsburgh Steeler players. After the play, unnecessary roughness, number 87 offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. Timeout was called by Kansas City. You know, he's a hothead. He's done it before. He got kicked out of a game earlier this year. Costly penalty here. Next Saturday, Premier League on NBC. Two great soccer houses collide. Manchester City taking on Tottenham. 12.30 Eastern Saturday on NBC. Back now to American football in Kansas City. Third and 20 after that penalty. Moves them back to the 44-yard line. Smith into the pocket, beat down the sideline, and it is caught. Tremendous catch by Jeremy Macklin right at the marker, which should be a first down. Needed 20, I believe gets 20 as they'll spot it. First down. Watch how early this ball is thrown by Alex Smith about a yard or two before the break, and he gets it in. How do you convert that one? So the huge mistake by Travis Kelsey has just been saved by Macklin and Smith. What a play. We well, talked about Kelsey and Hill being the guys. They've taken them out. You need somebody else to step up, and Macklin steps up there. Kelsey, who was out the last play, is back in. The ball at the 36-yard line. And nothing happening on the left side for West. Let's go back to Kelsey's penalty when he knocked Cockrell to the ground. And remember, he's frustrated, right? He dropped the long pass down the field. Now you're going to see Cockrell just sort of give him a little shove at the end of the play and then stand there. Great job by Cockrell. Believe me, NFL players practice that all the time. You mess with a guy, you say a little something, you give him a little bump, and Justin Houston went crazy on the sideline over there. Andy. We practice that. We talk about it. You can't beat us. Andy Reid wasn't too thrilled either. Second down and 11 from the 37. Good throw gets down to Murray. Caught there by Chris Connolly. And that'll make it third down and four after a gain of seven yards. There you go. Now they're doing it. Now they're starting to spread this thing around a little bit more. And Andy Reid 
He knows his tight end's frustrated at this point. Tyreek Hill's been having a little bit of a tough time. So now they're starting to get it to the other guys. Macklin with a big catch. Conley with a big catch. Wouldn't be surprised to see him engage Spencer Ware a little bit out of the backfield. Dominated by Pittsburgh, the numbers. Total yardage, time of possession. But still a one possession game. 15-7, big third and four here at the 30. Waning seconds of the quarter. Three-man rush. And the pass is incomplete. Wilson, who has scored the game's only touchdown, can't hold it in fourth down and four. William Gay covering on the play. It's playoff time. You have to make those plays. That's nicely done. They clear out with Travis Kelsey. Andy Reid, beautifully designed play. Got him right in behind. Good throw. Got to catch the ball and turn it up one yard. <sighs> so the Brazilian, Cairo Santos, with a 48-yard attempt. And Santos's kick is good. With 10 seconds remaining in the quarter, it's 15 to 10. Back to Arrowhead in 30 seconds. Pairings next week, and CBS has the late game. Winner of this against the Patriots. Fox has the earlier game, Green Bay beating Dallas today. So the Falcons get home field. One more game in the Georgia Dome, Green Bay at Atlanta. And then in three weeks, it's on to the Super Bowl in Houston. Troy and Joe have to get their blood pressure medicine out after calling that one down there today. That was fun. Yep. What a game. And our friends, Mrs. Nance and Sims will be in Foxborough as we wrap up our coverage of Sunday Night Football. We didn't think we'd have a Sunday night game this, this <laughs> no. week, but, but we did. We're night creatures, you know that. Santos. This is a bouncing ball fielded at the six yard line. Sammy Coates will run it back. Wide receiver by trade. Back out to the 30 yard line. Let's go to Heather. Al, when Alex Smith found out that less than 1% of foster kids graduate college, he was motivated to do something about it, and he has. The Alex Smith Foundation has helped 23 former foster kids graduate. Smith is the Chiefs nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year, presented by Nationwide, which will be awarded Super Bowl weekend at the annual NFL Honors Ceremony. I gather, and a worthy candidate in dealing with Alex for years, all class. All class and wants this victory. Here's a guy that has been sort of the other quarterback to the Ben Roethlisberger's and the Tom Brady's and the Aaron Rodgers. He just wants a shot. Well, overall number one draft choice by the 49ers back in 05. Bell takes it to the 32 and that takes us to the fourth quarter. End of three with the score of Pittsburgh 15, Kansas City 10. This divisional playoff continues after these messages. Here's downtown Kansas City. Tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Arrowhead Stadium, KC, Al Michaels, Chris Collins, we're in. Michelle Tafoya, Heather Cox with you. 15 to 10 is the score. Pittsburgh has a second down and nine as we begin this quarter from their own 31 yard line. Attention to Eric Berry on the defensive side. He is their playmaker. And a lot of big ones this year. And that's caught over the middle. After the 45 goes Eli Rogers for a Pittsburgh first down. Well, Eric Berry, here's a guy he thought his career was over. Maybe even his life a couple of years ago contracted lymphoma. Not only overcame it, then came back last year. Had a phenomenal year. And once again this year, he's on to another Pro Bowl made so many huge plays obviously made another one here tonight in this game but basically won the Atlanta game with a few of those plays that he made two returns one for a two point conversion on the defensive side one for a touchdown there's Bell little skipping around now to the 49 goes Le'Veon Bell Le'Veon Bell by the way with a little skirmish developing for a second there 
157 scrimmage yards per game this season. That is the third highest in the history of the league. Number one would be Priest Holmes, who did it for the Chiefs back in 02, and O.J. Simpson would be second with the 75 Bills. I'm telling you, though, they're starting to bottle him up a little bit. You know, he's been dancing, but nothing's been popping open here lately like it was early. Second and seven from the 48. Quick toss, screen set up here. That goes to Demarcus Ayers, who makes his first catch of the night. He's a rookie. They picked him in the seventh round out of the University of Houston, brought him up from the practice squad about a month ago. Yeah, he and Kobe Hamilton and a lot of guys out there, but if Marcus Peters is going to play that far off, they're going to go automatic to those screens. They simply had him out flanked. Nice job by Roethlisberger to recognize it. Third and about a half a yard. Give it to Bell. And you need a yard, and he gets you that to move the sticks. 28 carries, 166 ground yards for him. So much of this offense is built around David DeCastro, the pole bowler. Nice push off of Chris Jones and then get up to Rameek Wilson, who's been the guy who's been stopping Le'Veon Bell on some of those plays. Really had one bad game all season long against Philadelphia and Fletcher Cox, and he's not the only one. An offensive line coached by a Hall of Famer, Mike Munchak. What a job he's done with these guys as Roethlisberger pump fakes, fires over the middle, and then is caught, and then is Jesse James, who gets unbelievably free and takes it to the 21-yard line, right down the middle for Jesse James, having a big night. Five catches for 83 yards, that one good for 23. The dreaded pump fake from Ben Roethlisberger. Everybody jumped to the underneath coverage because that's where he pumped, and then Jesse James wide open in behind it. There is nobody in this league that does that pump fake like Ben Roethlisberger. I can't believe the ball doesn't come out of his hand. Been doing it for 13 years. Been part of that great draft class of 04 with Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers. Roethlisberger, the 11th overall pick. From the 21 now on first down. Well, again, it's amazing to, to watch him run to the 19th. It'll be second down at 8. They're starting to use their defensive linemen in a tighter alignment now, trying to clog up those middle rushing lanes, and then stacking Rameek Wilson right in behind him. See, they're kind of not quite the Bears front, and then there's Wilson right there. So they're trying to keep him clean. Let him go and dance back there with Le'Veon Bell and react up and make the play. Second and eight from the 19. Under 11 minutes remaining in the fourth. Roethlisberger fires and incomplete over the middle at the goal line. Eli Rogers cannot pull it in. Been a little frustrated there. Third and eight. That was some recovery by Steven Nelson, the slot corner. You had Eli Rogers fake hard inside. Nelson got off track and then goes up and then just recovers in time. Roethlisberger thought he should have had it. Third and eight from the 19. Looks coming. Ben in the pocket. And he's going to go down at the 24-yard line. And gets twisted as well. So Roethlisberger gets sacked here. Fourth down. Complete coverage sack. It was a great job. The offensive line blocked long enough down the field. They had coverage across the board. There's Wilson on Le'Veon Bell, who has to be exhausted by this point. Jesse James covered up, nowhere to go. And then finally, it was D. Ford who came first. And then Jarvis Jenkins. So a 43-yard attempt, if he makes it, it'll be the most field goals in any postseason game in NFL history. 
And he is able to bang it through from 43 out. He's accounted for all 18 points as Boswell. And it's 18 to 10, Pittsburgh. NBC's divisional playoff being brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by Fidelity Investments. By Sprint, visit Sprint.com. And by Coors Light, whatever your mountain, climb on. It's Matt Ryan, it's Brady, of course. Aaron Rodgers, what a game that was today. Some moments from postseason. Arrowhead Stadium, they're hoping that their ball club can find its way to Foxborough next week. 18 to 10 is the score. Picked by Boswell is dropped in the end zone, and then Hill will down it there. It's kind of the way the night's gone for these two superstars. Travis Kelsey all night long has been trying to work his way open against these two inside linebackers. Not a lot of luck. There's Lawrence Timmons running with him down the field. And of course, we've seen this one now a few times. Cost his team 15 yards. And there's the speedster, Tyreek Hill, on the outside. This is a Pittsburgh defense that has only allowed two touchdown passes thrown to receivers more than 20 yards beyond the line of scrimmage all season. That's the lowest total in the NFL, and it's showing up again here tonight. Check this formation. You have four receivers set to the right on first half of the 25. Now they break that as Wilson goes in motion. Smith fires over the middle, finds Kelsey. He gets free, and Kelsey a tough guy to bring down out to the 49-yard line. Travis Kelsey, it's a gain of 24. So you get the stack formation over here, and you're going to have guys basically disperse across once Wilson goes in motion, fake the screen that way, and come back the other way, and maybe this will get Kelsey going. It has been those kinds of plays. It's almost been when Hill has been the decoy that it's opened up more space in the Steelers' defense than anything else. That's his third catch of the night first since the first quarter. It's Hill set wide to the left. Working on the ground. Good run here. And a first down for Spencer Ware. Tackled by the safety Mike Mitchell. Gain of 10. First down, Kansas City. A little bit of the mobility that time of Alex Smith, I think, just held James Harrison for a fraction of a second on the backside. But this is a good team. He's going to try and come down. But you have to honor the fact that Alex Smith is a mobile guy. And that's one of the few good runs we've seen so far out of the Chiefs tonight. They need more. Chiefs only 57 round yards from the 40. Play action. Going for it all and turning around. It's incomplete. Jeremy Macklin looking inside pass to the outside. The rookie out of Miami, Artie Burns, covering second oh, down. Just a killer. They've got this wide open down the left side here. Perfect position inside man coverage. And I know what Smith was trying to do, drop it in over the outside shoulder, but he had him beat so badly. If he just gets it out in front of him, it's a touchdown. So we have seen already, didn't see Tyree Kill and completely misses that time with a big opportunity. Second and 10. Again, going deep, same spot, incomplete. This time it's already Burns covering Hill. You got a flag down back at the 47 yard line. Foul. Face mask, number 32 offense, 15 yard penalty, second down. Oh, that's Spencer Ware hanging in there to block. It gets called for the face mask foul. Ryan Shazier, one of the best blitzing linebackers, and you're going to see right here Spencer Ware trying to pick him up, gets away, gets the hand on the face mask, and here go the Chiefs walking backwards again. 15-yard foul, making it second down and 25. 
back at their own 45-yard line. This has been a sensational performance tonight by this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. They have been getting better and better and better. They transitioned to their youthful secondary. A couple of young guys up front, and they have been sensational tonight. Keith Butler, the defensive coordinator. Smith again, deep backfield, and that's caught at the 38-yard line. Kelsey gets it there. So on a second and 25, they get 17 of those back, setting up a third down and eight. I, it, it never ceases to amaze me, and I'm sure Keith Butler as well. You got them um, second down in a million. You run a little crossing route underneath your linebackers, and they all react up, and they work it in behind to the most dangerous receiver on the Chiefs. Butler was the longtime linebacker coach, and then when Dick LeBeau left to go to Tennessee, he got the D.C. position. Halfway through the quarter, it's a third and eight. With five wide, Timmons looking at Smith, pressured, chased by Harrison, and that forces him to throw it away. So Harrison able to come from the backside finally. Again, a great coverage by that secondary, and it's fourth and eight. Let me remind you that James Harrison is 38 years old. He got a sack fumble that turned the first playoff game against Miami, almost doing that. He it came from coverage back on the back end and ended up getting the pressure. Once again, there goes Tyree Kill down the middle of the field, and they don't see it. So it's fourth and eight. The ball at the 38. They have to go for it here. It was 7-11 to go in regulation. Again, they go five wide. Snap, but Smith comes down with it, fires, and it is Chris Conley converting at the 26-yard line. Huge play. The other receivers, right? The other receivers have had to step up, and that just could not have been a bigger play. Andy Reid has seen enough playoff losses in his day. He goes for it, takes a big chance. He dials up a guy that doesn't have a ton of catches for him this year. Huge play. Second catch for Conley tonight. Conley's a big guy. He's like 6'3". He is a little different looking out there on the field. Do they give him more chances now? The hill lined up deep in the backfield. Nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. They give it to him. Averaging 11 yards per rush this season. This time he picks up about three. She's here. Makes the tackle second and seven. Harrison for the moment out of the game. Well, he ran about 200 yards on that one pressure. Back in coverage. All the way back around. They have plenty of depth at that outside linebacker position. But once they settled on Dupree and Harrison, that seemed to be one of the things that turned this defense around. Jarvis Jones taking Harrison's spot in the one pick back in 2013 out of Georgia. Second down and seven. Five wide again. Quick toss. Wilson on the outside. And the man who scored the game's only touchdown he is still on his feet, but then gets corralled and stopped at the 25 yard line. And that brings us to a third down, third and nine. He's one of those guys that when he walks in the room, he gets your attention. I asked him to show his pass rush move to me one time in one of those production meetings. I said, just to, and he said, well, this is how I try to break the guy's arm. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? He yeah. goes, yeah, when I'm rushing around the corner, I want to take his and twist his elbow, and he did it about half. I said, okay, forget it. That's good. With a scowl, too. Oh, yeah. Third and nine. Clock down to under five minutes to go. Four-man rush. Fired over the middle and dropped. Chris Conley with a flag comes in. Two of them, you see them both as Conley gets whacked. Sean Davis, the rookie out of Maryland. This is a helmet-to-helmet -helmet call, I believe. And now Macklin's going to get into it with the secondary. And let's see about the call. Meanwhile, you you got another, another flag came out. When you throw a hat after you've thrown a flag, that's another penalty. Meanwhile, you got Conley still down on the ground at the two-yard line. There was the rookie, Sean Davis, who came in 
Helmet to helmet on a defenseless receiver. No question it's the right call. Now what happened afterwards, we shall see. Mm -hmm. Personal foul, illegal hit on a defenseless receiver, number 28, defense. That penalty will be enforced, half a distance to the goal. Automatic, first down. So whatever came in afterwards, not announced. Meanwhile, all the attention right now on Conley. And it's going to be first, first and goal from the one-yard line. Well, not the one. It comes back out to the 12-yard uh, line is where the penalty gets enforced. Meanwhile, let's check on Conley. You've got Tomlin going over things with, with, with Davis. Like a former secondary coach. Back after this. Do you have what it takes to be crowned the Madden 17 Club Series champion? Check it out, NFL.com slash Madden dash NFL. Happy to report Conley goes back to the sideline. The helmet to helmet is a personal foul, so it's half the distance to the goal line as opposed to pass interference, which it was not, which would have given them a first and goal. So it's half the distance. The ball is at the 12. They talk to Conley on the sideline. Harrison is back in the game. That time that was good for him. So Kendrick West is in the backfield. And they float it to him, and he makes the catch, and West will take the ball to the seven-yard line. Davis and Mitchell make the tackle. That'll make it second down and four. Perfectly executed play there. They brought the slot blitz off of that side, and the wide receivers, they're just blocking down the field. But this is the point in time now where we've seen Alex Smith start to run the football. Three touchdowns in the last three games running. Sean Davis on a knee and inside the boundary, so it's going to be an injury timeout situation, meaning he's going to have to come out of the game for at least one play. Well, you saw 28 Davis come in, and he did hit him with his head first. I don't know exactly what happened to him. Jordan Dangerfield comes in to take his place. Puts up that one finger again. I got to come out for one play. Should be back in for the next one. Yeah, and take second and four. Dangerfield, not a bad player, especially in run situations for Keith Butler. He played quite a bit a week ago. Happy to tell you, Conley is back in the game. So he passed the protocol. He's in the slot to the right. Hill is in motion. Here's a little shovel pass to Kelsey, and what a great tackle by William Gay. Great play by Gay, making it third down and two. Yeah, you're going to see Kelsey come through here. We saw Larry Fitzgerald score a touchdown on that one a season ago in the playoffs, but somehow. I think William Gay, who's been covering in that slot all night long, just had a sense for that when they hit it for a big play earlier. That was a huge tackle, and you have to think the Chiefs are going for it, even if they don't make it here. You do. Sean Davis back in the game. Where is the running back? It's third and two. Rolling is Smith and looking and throwing, and that's incomplete. So you've got fourth down now, intended for Demetrius Harris. And with 3.29 to go, he has to go for it. Yeah, that's a tough play. Anytime you try and go roll out against a zone defense, you just pack all those defensive players on that half of the field, and there's just nowhere to go. Man teams, maybe sometimes that ends up working, but here we go, and this is now the biggest call of the game for Andy Reid end of the season. And meanwhile, Kansas City will use a timeout and that's big because if they don't make this and Pittsburgh gets the ball, they can only have one timeout. They will get the benefit of the two minute warning, but it's conceivable that Pittsburgh could run it out all the way to the finish line. Yeah, a little surprising. You had to believe that they knew they were going to go for it on fourth down. But this now 
for Alex Smith, the, his mobility in some way, shape, or form is probably going to come into play here. The read option stuff, all the options off of that, that's when they've been at their most effective down here. But you also know the Pittsburgh Steelers have been watching that same tape too, so they know it's coming. Longest drive of the night in terms of plays and yards. This will be the 12th play of the drive. Bill bottom of the screen. Fake it to him. Smith rolling and then throwing, and that's going to be a first down. Anthony Sherman, they brought a fullback into the game, set him up to the left side, and he's able to pick up the first down. First and goal with the one. They capture your attention with their fastest guy, Tyreek Hill coming across, and then the fullback is going to go back the other way, probably the least covered guy on the field, and they hit a great call that time by Andy Reid. First catch of the night for Sherman. Two for two on fourth down on this drive. Three receivers set to the left. Inside handoff. Oh, the end zone is Spencer Ware for the touchdown. Two point game and a two point conversion to come. Just going to see him make the read right across here. James Harrison was right there in the hole. And it forced Ware to bounce around. Nice run for him. And here we go. A season on the line for the Kansas City Chiefs. How is this for a playoff doubleheader today? I can't imagine some kind of fake or something to Tyree Kill. <laughs> Won't be involved here. He is by himself at the bottom of the screen. Five receivers. Four of them set to the right. Smith looks left, and he throws. Caught, cut with the two-point conversion with a flag. Demetrius Harris makes the catch. He got a penalty, though. Holding. Number and it's going to come offense. back. Ten-yard penalty. The try will be attempted from the 12-yard line. Eric Fisher is six foot seven. James Harrison may be six feet. He dips underneath and watch what Eric Fisher does. He gets him hooked around the shoulder pads, a little grab, the official's right there. And those two points come off the board. They come off the board and it moves the ball back to the 12 yard line. So they need 12 yards to tie the game. Hill sets up on the left side. Yak, 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 yak. Kelsey on the left side as well. Smith to try to tie it. It is batted away in the end zone. Sean Davis, who was guilty of that helmet to helmet. Busted up, intended for Macklin. Two point game, 243 left. 2.43, so play head coach right now. If you're Andy Reid, do you try an onside kick? The kicking team this year recovered 11% of the onside kicks. That's about one out of nine. Or do you kick off, you have one timeout. As he goes over things with Dave Tobe, the special teams coach, one timeout plus the two-minute warning. Meanwhile, you talk about pressure, postseason, Kansas City trying to win a home playoff game for the first time since 1993. Pittsburgh trying to go to the AFC Championship game and get to their ninth Super Bowl. They are anticipating the Steelers are, as you can see, obviously the onside kick, which would have to go 10 yards. There's a lot of space down there. If you wanted to pooch it and let it bounce around down the field, use the two minute warning, use your timeout. A lot tougher to call plays when you're backed up because if you throw an interception down there. Well, Santos is going to send it down to about the eight yard line where Justin Gilbert uh, goes all the way back 
to the five, and then the ball for the for a moment looked like it was ready to come out. Eric Murray made the tackle. So they pin him deep, but now it's all a matter of the clock. 238. Left in regulation. There again, the, the brackets. The winner goes to New England on the AFC side. Green Bay goes to Atlanta on the NFC side. The ball is at the five yard line. The Pittsburgh Steelers. 238. Kansas City one timeout plus the two minute warning. Here's Bell threading. Picks up a couple. Do the Chiefs want to take their time out here, and they do. Yeah, a couple things to keep in mind down here now. You're sitting here at a two-point ball game, so obviously a safety, but if you have a holding call in the end zone, if you have intentional grounding in the end zone, all those are worthy of two points. And how much courage do you have? These are some great players on the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. How much courage do you have to throw the ball in this situation knowing a sack fumble, a safety, a hold back there, any of those things, an interception is a shot at a field goal for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, I don't throw it here because this is going to take it to the two-minute warning. And Kansas City's out of timeouts. Second down and eight from the seven. And they are going to throw it. Play action. And it's going to be caught at the 11-yard line by Eli Rogers. So it turns out fine for Pittsburgh because that's going to take the clock down to the two-minute warning. It's also going to set up a third down and four. And the bottom line is if they convert, they can run the clock out. If they don't, they'll have to punt. You got Hill going back there, no question about it, to return it. And then Kansas City could win it with a field goal. So a lot of stuff going on, but that will all come on the other side of the two-minute warning. A fight to the finish at Arrowhead. Pittsburgh 18, Kansas City 16. Volkswagen Post Game Report coming up. Michelle on the field, stars of the game. Bob breaking down the brackets. A look ahead to the championship games next weekend. Meanwhile, it comes down to this. It's a third down and three. Ball to 12. If they convert, it's all but over. Cannot jump off sides here. Roethlisberger serving. Buying time. Throws. Caught. Brown. At the 19-yard line, Antonio Brown. First catch of the second half. Wow. Antonio Brown just too fast. He's going to come across. You're going to see Justin Houston drop underneath this thing. And he's right there. He's right in the throwing lane. Ben saw him, bought enough time for Bell to work around him, or Antonio Brown to work around him, and converted the biggest third down of the season and they can run it out so Brown who had five catches in the first half was blanked in the second half and the Pittsburgh Steelers can begin to think about Foxborough time out. Pittsburgh a 30 second timeout 30 second timeout with the play clock running down and to answer our own question how much courage did Todd Haley the play caller have a ton he threw it twice in that sequence mm. so you've got the killer bees and then add a fourth tonight you've got Roethlisberger Bell Brown and how about Chris Boswell there have been over 500 postseason games 534 in the history of the league it's the first time somebody's made more than five field goals in the game Boswell who joined the team last year Took over for Josh Scobie, has kicked six tonight. So you've got a ball game tonight here in Kansas City, Chris. You had two touchdowns in the game, both by one team, and they lose. And a holding call to keep it from going to overtime, likely. They had the two point conversion. They converted on fourth down a few times. But the old man moves on, James Harrison, and for Andy Reid. Postseason, well, the postseason frustration just continues. Andy's coached now in 23 postseason games. And he's going to have a record of 11 wins and 
12 losses. Back to the holding call. The two point conversion and it's that guy right there, James Harrison, that draws it against the former number one overall pick, Eric Fisher. Take two off the board. Can't drive it in there on the next one. And for Todd Haley, the play caller for the Pittsburgh Steelers, fired by the Kansas City Chiefs as their head coach. How sweet is this one for him? Very. So this will do it, one kneel down, and the Pittsburgh Steelers run the table at the end of the regular season, win their last seven, beat Miami, come into Kansas City, beat them on the road, and will play for a ninth Super Bowl trip next Sunday. Great respect between those two guys as the Steelers win it by a score of 18 to 16.